A man in the crowd said to Jesus, Master, tell my brother to give me a share of our inheritance. My friend, he replied, who appointed me your judge or the arbitrator of your claims? Then he said to them, life is not made secure by what he owns, even when he has more than he needs. Then he told them a parable. There was once a rich man who, having had a good harvest from his land, thought to himself, what am I to do? I've not enough room to store my crops. Then he said, this is what I'll do. I'll pull down my barns and build bigger ones and store all my grain and my goods in them. And I'll say to my soul, my soul, you have plenty of good things laid by for many years to come. Take things easy, eat, drink, have a good time. But God said to him, fool, this very night the demand will be made for your soul. And this hoard of yours, whose will it be then? So it is when a man stores up treasure for himself in place of making himself rich in the sight of God. I spent a fair bit of time this week looking for a story that would shed some light on the gospel. It's not that it was difficult to understand what Jesus was saying, but to, to highlight the, the main point that Jesus is making. There are plenty of stories around that are told that intend to illuminate that gospel passage, particularly the parable that Jesus tells. But most of them just repeat it in different words. They don't add anything to it. They're all about somebody who pursues some goal, some personal goal, whether that be wealth or possession or land or even promotion, success in the eyes of the world. And when they achieve that, then they'll be satisfied. Then they will feel secure. But when they're just about to taste success, whatever success means to them, their life is taken and they never get to enjoy it, whatever it is. And I'm not sure that that's what Jesus is saying. Yes, there is something about security in the gospel, about investing in the things of the kingdom rather than in the things of this world, because that's where our security lies, but I'm not sure it's as simple as that. And this, this phrase in the parable, this very night the demand will be made for your soul, I think that's a distraction rather than an encouragement. It takes us off down a different line. When I first read the gospel, I thought it was about greed. And I suppose in a way it is because it's greed that initiates the the parable that Jesus tells. Be on your guard against avarice of any kind. Be on your guard against all covetousness, the desire for more than you have or more than you need. Be on your guard against greed. And after saying that, after issuing that warning, Jesus tells the story of the, the landowner who has the very successful harvest. But here, Jesus doesn't criticize him for being rich or successful, or fortunate. It's his attitude to what he has, to his good fortune, that Jesus is critical of. What he does with it. Reminds me of another of the parables that Jesus tells in Luke's Gospel, a little later in the Gospel. The story he tells of Lazarus, the poor man, and the rich man, at whose gates Lazarus sits, begging. The rich man doesn't do any harm to Lazarus, doesn't increase his suffering in any way, doesn't do anything wrong. He just doesn't do anything for Lazarus at all. At best, he's thoughtless. At worst, 
he's selfish and uncaring. And I think that's what the parable that Jesus tells in today's gospel is about. It's about selfishness. The rich man who has the good harvest doesn't think of anyone but himself. He's just intent on making the most for himself of his good fortune, not sharing it with anyone else, not thinking of who else could share in his good fortune, in the benefits of his good harvest and his lot. And that's a theme that runs throughout Luke's gospel, this idea that those who have have a responsibility for those who have not. In all of the stories that I read, looking for something that would contribute to our understanding of the parable, I did come across one. It was about a Church of England clergyman called John Wesley. When he began his career as a clergyman in the 18th century, his income was £30 a year. That was just about enough to live off. In fact, we're told that Wesley managed to live off £28 a year. And the other two, he gave away. Later, he gained a position teaching in Oxford. And his salary rose to £60. His income rose to £60 a year. Nevertheless, Wesley continued to live off the 28 that he believed he needed. The other 32, he gave away. Similarly, when his income rose to 90 and later to £120 a year, he lived off 28 and gave the rest away. Eventually, his income was well over £1,000 a year. But he took what he need, needed 28 pounds, and the rest he gave away. He believed firmly that our status as Christians isn't measured by our standard of living, but of our standard of giving. I think the gospel invites us, the parable invites us to look at our lives, to look at our needs and look at our desires what's left over after our, our needs are met. What happens to that? How much do we think of ourselves? And how much thought do we give to the needs of others? Because those who have, have a responsibility to those who have not.